If you want to shoot great cinematic video with your iPhone, the easiest way is just to use the phone. The latest iPhones can shoot Dolby Vision, ProRes, and they now even come with a native log color profile, pushing these devices to an even higher level. But that said, adding extra equipment can really boost the production values of your content, whether you're shooting YouTube videos, TikTok videos, or short films. A basic $30 tripod gives you so many extra options. There's cases, grips, and cages too. The mics in your iPhone are really good, but if you want to be truly professional, you can add an external mic, so I'll be looking at the best ones. iPhones come with multiple lens options, but I still like to use add-on lenses. If you're going to believe the Apple hype, the iPhone 15 Pro Max contains seven cameras. There's actually four. Then there's three types of filters I like to use. Mainly ND filters, but polarizing and diffusion filters can be useful as well. The inbuilt stabilization of your iPhone is really strong. So why do you need a 3-axis gimbal? The reason is, well, I'll tell you why later in the video. Small lights could be useful, while a dedicated camera app to give you more control is also pretty essential. I've timestamped everything, so if you're only interested in a particular piece of kit, you can find it easily. Filming with an iPhone means that you have a lot more options when it comes to tripods. They start as small as this little thing, made by Joby, and they go up all the way to a regular camera tripod made for bigger cameras. This isn't going to be your main tripod, but it's a great little thing just to have in your pocket or in the corner of your kit bag. Clip your phone in and you can rest it on any surface. And you can also use it for hands-free video watching and so on. But the legs actually come off and now the clamp bar can be used with a different tripod. There's a number of small and medium sized tripods, but over time I've actually found myself most of the time using these regular sized tripods. My two most used tripods are these by Andua. This one is slightly lighter and smaller than this one. If I need the height, then I'll just use the bigger one. But otherwise, I'll just use the lighter weight one because it's just easier to move around. And when you've got such a small camera, like an iPhone, you don't really need a big, heavy tripod. Both of these tripods have clips for adjusting the legs. And, you know, in my opinion, I really recommend that you go for a tripod with clips and not the screw version. In my experience, the clip version is just so much easier to use. If you're setting up your tripod and then just leaving it in one position all the time, then the screw version is fine. But in my case, I'm generally moving my tripod around a lot, you know, to get different angles. And that's actually a pretty good tip right there is to make sure you get lots of different angles because it will make your videos much more interesting. So I don't want to spend like 10 or 20 seconds every time you want to adjust, you know, the length when all you've got to do with these is just both these tripods have a central extension which can then be set horizontally. When you need to have your iPhone camera shooting straight down on a table, this is perfect really. I use this Manfrotto monopod with my gimbals and there's a number of different shots that you can get like crane shots or fake drone shots and also you can create really steady left to right dolly shots using a monopod and a gimbal and your smartphone. As well as that, they also help getting a steady focus pull. Plus, you can use it like a regular monopod. Just mount the phone and it gives you extra stability for videography or photography. There are cases, cages and rigs for your iPhone which perform various functions. And they can be used to mount lenses, microphones and lights and to mount your iPhone to a tripod. Or you can just simply use them to give you a more stable grip. I've been shooting video with smartphones professionally for quite a few years now. And in that time, I've really gone through tons and tons of these clamps. And some you find they're like dirt cheap, but after a couple of weeks, they just fall apart. And some I find are more expensive, and much more solidly built, but maybe just a bit too fiddly and more bulky than you actually need. So after trying dozens of these things over so many years, I've now found that these are the ones that I use all the time. They're by JJC and uh, they're pretty cheap but also quite well made. I've never had one break or fall apart and there's just enough here for what I need. There's a port on the back 
although I've never used that. There's a cold shoe on the top and a spirit level as well. And they're made with plastic, metal and rubber. But it's all you know, fairly good quality build here. I've actually been using this one for a couple of years and you can see it's pretty much as good as it was when I bought it. Moment still makes some of the best cases for iPhones. What I like about them is that they're easy to get on and off and I personally have never had any issues with them. I don't use cases normally so I just use the Moment cases when I'm using anamorphic lenses or other lenses and filters. So Moment do regular cases and they do MagSafe versions as well. This grip and case is by Freewell. The case has bayonet and magnetic mounting options for filters and lenses. And it's very sturdy and well made. Although being so strong, it does make it slightly harder to take it on and off compared to the moment case. The shift cam case is nice and also sturdy. And it's a little bit easier to get on and off than the Freewell one. And this one comes with a screw mount which allows you to mount their lenses. The grip has a spring loaded clamp and three quarter inch threads on the top and another three on the bottom. And you can use these to attach a selfie stick or a tripod. And there's also a cold shoe mount at the top. Now this part flips down and the base pivots. So now you have a handle. You can face it whichever way you want. Then you've got this Bluetooth button, take it from the bottom and you place it on the handle and it just sticks there magnetically. So now you've got this uh, shutter button. As well, pull the handle and it extends to create a selfie stick. I don't think I've ever tested a phone clamp that's so versatile. As well, you can use the grip as a desk stand for your iPhone. So for example, if you're editing a video, your iPhone is now at a more comfortable angle. So this really is like a Swiss army knife of phone clamps. If you have the budget, in my opinion, Beast Grip makes the best quality cages and grips. There's a universal version like this, as well as the cage, which fits you know exactly to your iPhone model. So you would have to get one specifically for whichever iPhone you have. You can add handles to the cage and there's a space to add other extras like mics and lights. There's also budget options. For example, I really like the cage by Small Rig. As well, companies like Newer and Ulanzi offer cheaper alternatives. But like I say, the B script build quality generally is, you know, top level. Normally it's the camera tech which is leaping ahead every year. While good audio kit pretty much never changes. But since the iPhone 12, it's actually the cameras that haven't really changed too much. Meanwhile, audio and audio accessories have made some advances. So aside from the inbuilt mics of the iPhone, I've got three wireless setups for you to take a look at. The Comica Vimo S is designed to be used with smartphones and they're very compact, easy to use and come in a nice little charging box. When you open the box, it gives you a battery level reading. So that's pretty useful. Inside the box, you get two transmitters to be clipped to the talent. You know, try and get it as near to the mouth as possible. The receiver slides out of the back of the box and everything automatically boots up, connects, and it's ready to go. Plug the receiver into your iPhone and it should start recording audio via the wireless mics. Here's a quick tip for using external mics with your iPhone. Sometimes it's still using the inbuilt mics of the iPhone, even though you've got an external mic plugged in. So what you can try doing is try closing the camera app completely and then unplug the mic, plug it back in, boot up the camera app again, and hopefully you'll find that it's now connected. It's always a good idea to do a little test first. So don't forget that when you play back a video, you need to remove the microphone from the port, whether it's lightning or USB-C now. It's gonna mute the audio if it's got something plugged into the charging port. I'm gonna walk up towards the road and we're going to get lots of traffic noise and then we will see what happens with the denoiser on okay now we have the denoiser on and now it is pretty noisy so we're really putting it under some serious test here to see how well it works the denoiser it makes my voice go all synthy and horrible let's we'll see what happens so I'm just going to turn the denoiser off now. You can hear the difference. 
Yeah, it's blue, so that means it's off. The limitations with this device are that you can't use a wired lav with it and you can't use the transmitter as a standalone recorder. Uh, you can with some of the more expensive devices. So there's a lightning and a USB-C version. So just make sure that you have the correct one. The Saramonic Blink Me B2 wireless microphone setup is pretty innovative with its uh, quite interesting design. It comes in this sturdy carry case, which is much bigger than the one you get with the Comica setup. And inside you've got the main device. You've got a pretty decent tripod clamp, although I don't think it's as good as the one that I showed you earlier. There's a couple of cables, there's furry windshields, various tools for mounting the mic. There's clips for the transmitters, but you can also use the magnetic option when you have nothing to clip to. One downside is there's no lightning connector, so we need to use an adapter for use with our pre-15 iPhones. There's a touch sensitive color LCD screen on the front of each circular transmitter, which allows you to control things like audio level. There's also a touch screen on the receiver as well. As well, this setup allows you to record directly onto the transmitter. So that's one advantage over the Comica. And this allows you to use the transmitter as a standalone field recorder. And that's something that I do quite a lot because it's just more flexible and means that you don't have to worry about cables and connection. You've just got all the audio in here in the transmitter. It does mean that you have to sync it up later when you're editing, but like the Comica, you cannot attach a wired Lavalier microphone to the transmitter. The Saramonic also has the similar kind of noise reduction uh, that the Comica has. Uh, so this is what it's switched on, so you can see how well it's doing. One fun thing about this microphone is that you can actually add your own graphics to the transmitter screen. So you can kind of customize it. And here you can see that I've added, you can see that I've added this little picture, which is an ebook that I've made about smartphone gimbals, which you can actually get as a member on Patreon. I've been using the Rode Wireless Go 2 system for a couple of years. The transmitters allow you to attach a wired lav or just use them as they are. Plus they can be used as standalone field recorders. But recently I got the DJI mic system and I find it's just a little bit better. Firstly, the transmitters and receivers come in this nice solid case, which is also a charging case. Meanwhile, the road system comes in a kind of soft pouch when you can't use that for charging. The DJI transmitters allow you to use wired labs or their inbuilt mics and they can be used as standalone recorders exactly the same as the road setup. But the DJI transmitters have a dedicated record button while the Rode version doesn't. There's also a magnetic option for clipping it to your clothes. And I do find that to be a lot more convenient than using the clip. As well, it also comes with lightning and USB-C connector options. So you're ready to go. And there's no messing about worrying about adapters. Now, another good thing is that the transmitter mounts directly to your phone without cables. And the reason this is good is because it means you don't need to work out where to put the transmitter. You, know, you don't have to have it sort of dangling down somewhere. For example, when you're using a grip or maybe using a gimbal or a tripod, and it's just stuck into the side of the iPhone and it's not causing any problems or getting in the way of anything. Another advantage is that you can transfer audio files directly from the transmitter to your computer and all you need is a USB-C cable. Because with the Rode you plug it in using the cable and then you need to boot up the software and then it has to recognize the transmitter Then you have to convert the Rode audio files to a usable format and then it exports them. And it's just a much more long-winded process. The DJI mics record WAV files. So all you've got to do is plug it in, drag the files across, and then you're ready to get going. Conversion lenses sit over the existing lens and change the way they look. And these mostly consist of wide angle, anamorphic, telephoto, and macro lenses. But now that our iPhones come with these multiple lenses inbuilt, we don't really need these conversion lenses, do we? Well, actually, I still use them. Thing is, the main sensor performs so much better than the secondary sensors, especially in low light conditions. Plus, the main camera usually has better inbuilt stabilization. As well, there are currently no iPhones with an inbuilt anamorphic option. So if we want anamorphic lenses, 
we need to buy a conversion lens. Another reason to add lenses is that they add character to the image. Thing is, digital images, they're often quite sharp and clean, which can be a bit too clinical. Pro cinematographers like using anamorphic lenses to kind of rough up the image a bit. You know, those slight aberrations and distortions just look cool, not to mention the characteristic lens flares. Moment still probably makes the best known conversion lenses. They're great quality and the company has a big range of lens and filter accessories for smartphones. And it's all nicely designed to work together. I have two anamorphic lenses, both the blue flare and the gold flare versions. I also have a 58mm telly, which is great. You just place it over the main camera. Plus I have a 67mm filter mount, which slides pretty easily onto the moment lens. And this then allows you to mount any filters, not just moments. So that makes it a more flexible system than the others that I'm gonna talk about. The ones that I have at the moment are the M series of lenses, but Moment have recently released the new T series. The thing about the new iPhones, the 14s and 15s, they have bigger sensors. And this causes problems with the older lens design. And you might see some vignetting if you use the M series with the newer iPhones. So for that reason, if you have a newer iPhone and you're thinking of getting moment lenses, I recommend you go for the T series. Shiftgam sent me this box full of lenses. So you can't actually buy this box. It's just for sending out to reviewers, but I've tested them out and they are very nice lenses. This is the 60 millimeter telephoto, which is really nice for portraits and that narrow field of view character that we get from telephoto lenses. And the glass itself adds some character to the image. Personally, I really like the look of conversion telephoto lenses when compared to the inbuilt telephoto of the iPhone. So this is in regular video mode with the telephoto mounted over the main wide camera and it's filmed using the iPhone's native camera app. And you can actually also place it over the telephoto. Now this is the 60 mm tele over the main wide lens, but this time I've put it into cinematic mode. So you're gonna get a bit of extra blurry background. Now there's something that I don't like about these lenses, specifically the anamorphics. And the problem is that they're loose, so they rotate freely and any slight knock might move it out of position. And as well, once you mount the variable ND, when you turn to adjust the filter, the lens is gonna move with it. So it's just a little bit annoying that you have to keep uh, leveling out the anamorphic. Now these are the Freewell anamorphic lenses, and they come in both the 1.33 and 1.55 aspect ratios, as do the shift cam ones. They also do blue and gold flare options like Moment, and they work with the case and grip, which I've already covered earlier in the video. And also they have their own filters, such as ND and diffusion filters. Now, both these anamorphic lenses create nice images. Remember that you're adding an anamorphic lens to add character. There is softness in areas of the image. There are small aberrations, but these are actually things that you want. This is why you're actually buying an anamorphic lens. This is, like I say, why professional cinematographers use anamorphic lenses. They want these little sort of imperfections because they find that digital images are too clean and it just adds this extra nice character. To help you get the most out of your anamorphic lenses, I've created a dedicated post for Patreon members going deeper into how and why to use them. And I've also written a book called Exploring the Film Look, which members can download for free. And I would say that anamorphic lenses and the film look kind of go hand in hand. You know, they work together because as well, the film look, and it's also about adding imperfections and character to your images. Just like lenses, we can add filters to our iPhone cameras to enhance the images. There's ND, otherwise known as neutral density filters. There's PL, or otherwise known as polarizing filters. There's also diffusion filters. ND filters allow us to slow our shutter speed and add motion blur to our videos and photos. And again, this is what we need for the film look or just to make our videos look a bit smoother. Polarizing filters remove glare and they kind of clean up the image, adding a richness to the colors amongst other things. For example, they make skies look more vibrant. Meanwhile, diffusion filters soften the light to remove some of that nasty looking digital sharpness 
and also add blooms around the lights. This is a 67 mm variable ND filter made to be used with regular cameras, which I can mount with my 67 mm moment filter mount. The advantage of having a bigger filter is that you get slightly better quality plus less problems with vignetting around the edges. This comes with a downside because you can't really use this filter with a smaller foldable gimbal. It's too big and it's too heavy. Tiffin are well known for their black Promist diffusion filters. Professional cinematographers use these to add a slightly hazy look to the image without harming the definition and they can also add a little bit of detail in the shadows. Diffusion filters usually come in a range of strengths, and this one is a 1 8th. The Moment do a range of diffusion filters as well, called Cine Bloom, and they come in different strengths too. I've had these Sandmark clip-on filters for a while now, and I still actually use them. They create a nice look, I think, and they're kind of convenient. They are ND and polarizer filters combined. So that's gonna reduce the light and it's also gonna reduce the glare at the same time. Because they clip on, you do have to be careful about light getting in behind the filter and causing reflections. Now, Sandmark also sells a range of cases and mount systems like Moment and like the other companies. However, unlike Moment, it only works with their filters. A gimbal doesn't just allow you to shoot stabilized and smooth footage. A three axis gimbal is a motorized device that keeps the smartphone steady and level and allows you to shoot all kinds of different shots that are pretty much impossible to get holding your smartphone in your hands. There's low tracking shots, there's high tracking shots, crane shots, uh, fake drone shots, sideways tracking shots, and you know, the list goes on. So let's look at my two favorite three axis motorized gimbals for iPhones. Insta360 is obviously better known for their 360 cameras, but this year they came out with a foldable three axis gimbal and I personally love it. The gimbal folds up very neatly indeed. It has an all-in-one design complete with tripod legs, cold shoe and extendable handle inbuilt. To change modes, all you do is swipe your thumb around the black interface. When combined with the Insta360 app, there's various extra features. Overall, the gimbal implements a bunch of design ideas which make this device stand out from the other foldable gimbals. There's things like excellent tracking, and I found that the motors create nice, smooth, stable videos. When you shoot hyperlapses, the gimbal slows down its movement so there's no sudden changes in direction. As well, being able to switch lenses with a flick of the zoom wheel is really user-friendly. I actually tested the flow with my iPhone 14 Pro Moment case, as well as a 1.3 times anamorphic, and it handled that setup fine. But I wouldn't want to load it up with much more than that. For a fold-up portable iPhone gimbal, I really like the Insta360 flow. To me, this just feels like the next step in lightweight gimbal design. If you want a gimbal that can cope with more weight and has greater motor flexibility, I recommend the Hoem iSteady M6. This is a smartphone gimbal that can carry larger phones with extras added. Mount the phone and adjust the roll axis arm for balance. There's a focus wheel at the side and that helps you to shoot pro looking focus pulls. If you double press the button in the middle, the gimbal switches from focus mode to roll mode. And now you can use the wheel to adjust the roll axis. And that's something that I find really useful. The iSteady M6 also has a mini screen and that makes it much easier to see which mode you're in. One great feature with this gimbal is the little AI tracking module, which doubles up as a fill light. Normally a gimbal needs the app that comes with it for tracking, but this module tracks you without using the app. This means that you can use a different app and still have the gimbal tracking you. You might want to use the iPhone native app, for example, if you wanted to use cinematic mode, which is currently native app only. And this is also great for live streaming, you know, with TikTok or YouTube or other platforms or any other situation where you're going to need to use another app for streaming. Now there's also these A and B buttons on the handle, and this allows you to program in a slow movement between two positions. And this is great for motion time lapse where you want to use a different app. You might want to use 
a third party app like Filmic Pro, or you might want to use the iPhone's native camera app. And you can also just use it for programming in a camera movement. It triple tap the trigger and it's going to rotate the smartphone 180 degrees. Tap the trigger four times and it's going to switch to ultra wide angle mode. And this is going to prevent the motor appearing in shot when you're using an ultra wide angle lens. Another thing you can do with this gimbal is you can add a remote control device. So again, I just love the overall design of this gimbal. They've really thought about everything. But maybe you want to add a small light to your vlogging setup, something like this little guy by VGIM. It has a cold shoe mount, so it can work with a cage, which has a cold shoe. Uh, you know, like the small rig case that I showed you earlier in the video. The light allows you to adjust brightness and temperature. If you want complete control of things like ISO, shutter speed, white balance and focus, as you would get on a dedicated camera, and you can download a third party app and it's going to help you to do that. There's a good chance you've heard of Filmic Pro. It's the most famous camera app for shooting video. But the company was bought by Bending Spoons, which is known for aggressively monetizing any app that they buy. And after that, the price went up from $30 for a lifelong purchase to a $50 a year subscription. Uh, but I will say it's still the most feature rich and reliable video shooting app for iPhones. The makers of high quality, affordable digital video cameras and the DaVinci Resolve editing system, Blackmagic Design, have just released a camera app for iPhones and it's entirely free. Thing is, companies like Blackmagic, B-Script, and Moment, they've got equipment to sell. So for them, they can use their camera apps as part of their marketing strategy. And Filmic Pro doesn't have that option. But anyway, this is a great app. And personally, I prefer this simpler layout to other apps, even including Filmic Pro. On the downside, there's still not too many features included compared to other apps. There's no log profile, for example. Also, I found that the higher levels of stabilization aren't working properly on my iPhone 14 Pro. But these are things that I'm sure will get fixed in the future. And I'm sure that Blackmagic are gonna develop this app and turn it into something powerful, as they've done with their editing software. Cinema P3 is free to download, but if you want all the controls, you need to buy the Pro version. At the time when I paid for the Pro version, it cost me seven pounds. This app does have lots of features. It also allows you to customize the way the interface works. So you can set it up to the way that you prefer to work. And this has become quite a popular app amongst those who ditched Filmic Pro. So it's definitely worth a look. And aside from those, there's also very good apps by Moment and Bscript. And there are others too, but these are the ones that I find work best and are most user friendly. Another one you can look at is ProTake, which people find pretty easy to use and is currently the same price as Filmic Pro. New iPhones come with a USB-C port, which allows faster file transfers if you have the correct cable. With the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, you can now record video directly to an external drive. And if you're filming ProRes, you're gonna need tons of memory space. So these are great little external drives. This is a Crucial X9 Pro 4 terabyte portable SSD. Now they're really small and portable, obviously, as the name suggests, and they do have nice and fast read and write speeds. So probably more well-known Samsung T7 4 terabyte portable SSD portable drives. They are a little bit more expensive than the X9s, but they're also great for video work. And they're kind of industry standard now. You know, a lot of uh, filmmakers, professional filmmakers are using these Samsungs. I've been using the Samsung T5s for three or four years now. I found them to be very reliable, never had any issues with them. We all know that you can spend fortunes on equipment, but if you don't know how to use it, then it's all pretty much money down the toilet. But on my Patreon, $5 invested gets you video lessons, nine day courses for gimbals, for smartphones, everything that you need to know to master your devices. So if you wanna join us there, I look forward to seeing you. Otherwise, until next time.